Hello, Jim Keener here, your coach for college. Practice your way to higher ACT scores with ePrep, which features 24-7 on-demand videos and interactive lessons. Here's our ACT platform. Remember, Coach for College gives the highest discount from retail for ePrep on the Internet. Here we go. I hope you enjoy it. Again, this sounds way too formal. I don't think it's within the same style and tone of the original essay. 
say, and a D. Anyway, when it came to boots, I, I would say that this sounds a little too informal, okay? So I get rid of D, I'm going to stick with A, and move on with confidence. Based on the information presented, which one of the following statements best explains why the clarity and odor values of Lake D did not change from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the day the samples were taken? Okay, so let's quickly take a look right here. And here's the formula for specific gravity. And right underneath it, it says the normal range of specific gravity of lake water is 1.1 through 1.3. Swimming in lake water that has specific gravity of more than 1.3 is considered unhealthy and is forbidden by local authorities. Okay, so if the specific gravity of a lake goes above 1.3, it is considered unhealthy and swimming in that lake is forbidden by local authorities. All right, so let's take a look at table one. And you'll see when you look down the specific gravity column that Lake D is above that 1.3. So nobody was allowed to swim in Lake D, at least at 7 o'clock in the morning, they weren't, all right? And then if you take a look at Table 2 and look down specific gravity, you see, again, Lake D is the only one that has a specific gravity value of above 1.3, which means, really, probably nobody could swim in Lake D during the day that day. So if nobody swam in the lake, it might have something to do with the fact that the odor and clarity values did not change from the morning sample to the afternoon sample. So take a look at A. Solid particles in lake water are typically very pungent. That's a very general statement and is not Lake D specific. Lake D did not receive heavy rain the week before the samples were taken. Uh, I don't think it said anything in there about Lake D uh, getting or not getting heavy rain the week before, so I get rid of that one, because it has to be based on the information presented, all right? No one swam in Lake D on the day the samples were taken. That sounds pretty reasonable based on my analysis just now. And D, swimmers in lakes A, B, and C stirred up solid particles that would otherwise have remained undisturbed at the bottom of those lakes. So giving me information about the other lakes doesn't help me with Lake D. I think C is definitely the best one. I would pick it with confidence and 